So just some more examples of L'Hopital's rule and some traps to watch out for. So um, here's a pretty straightforward one. Limit x approaches 1 of e to the x minus e over l and x. Check to make sure it's either a 0 over 0 form or an infinity over infinity form. So uh, if I plug in the 1, I get e minus e, so that's approaching 0. If I plug, plug in the 1, I get ln of 1, which is 0. All right, so I'm just going to say, I'm going to abbreviate this time and just say this is a 0 over 0 form. All right, we'll all understand that that means L'Hopital's rule applies. On the AP exam, make sure you write L'Hopital's rule applies because the limit is a 0 over 0 form. All right, since it is a 0 over 0 form, this limit equals the limit as x approaches 1 of, and I can just get to do the derivative of the top and the bottom. Remember, that's, that's not how I would take the derivative of this quotient. If I wanted the derivative of this quotient, I would have to use quotient rule, f prime g minus fg prime over g squared. But that's not what this is. It's a limit, and I can do the derivative of the top and the bottom and have the same limit. So this is going to give me e to the x over 1 over x. So it should be pretty clear, by the way, that e to the x minus e over ln x is not the same as e to the x over 1 over x. These two are not the same. Their limits are the same. That's all L'Hopital's rule says. Okay, so then this, I can, um, let's see, what happens if I plug in 1 now? I get e over 1. Oh, okay. So that equals, um, let, let's be nice and write that e to the 1 over 1 to the 1 by substitution. And then just say that equals e. Hey, that limit is e. Eh, who would have guessed that? Not me. All right. This one, how can that be a 0 over 0 form? It's not even a quotient. So what you want to look for, if you suspect L'Hopital could help you, and in this case it can, look for hidden quotients. Secant is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Say those are both quotients, and I bet I could combine them using a common denominator to get a single quotient. So this is 1 over cosine x minus sine x over cosine x. So that, now, by the way, I have not used L'Hopital's rule. I haven't done any calculus. I'm just doing trig. I'm just rewriting the, uh, this, uh, what the limit is. So this is going to be 1 minus sine x over cosine x. See, now I've turned what looked like a difference into actually a quotient. Now let's think about what kind of form it is. Well, um, sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that means my numerator is approaching 0. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So hey, it's a 0 over 0 form. How about that? All right, that means I get to do the derivative of the top and the bottom. So now I'm going to say this equals limit. Notice how I'm using the limit every single time. I never get tired of writing that. So let's do the derivative of the top. Let's see, derivative of negative sine is going to be negative cosine. And derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. All right, let's see what we got now. So, so you got to check, what can you do it by substitution? Check that each time, because maybe you'll have to do this twice, maybe not. So I put in the pi over 2 to a substitution. Cosine of pi over 2 is uh, uh, 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1. So I can say that this is, um, we can just cancel the negatives. This is cosine pi over 2 over sine pi over 2 by substitution. And uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is uh, 1, so that equals 0. That limit is 0. Eh, how about that? Okay. A couple of things to watch out for. Oh, I didn't write the problem down. I thought I wrote the problem down. Uh, number 10, uh, limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus sine squared x over sine of x. All right. Check first to see if it's a 0 over 0 form. Let's see, what happens when I put in the 0? I'll see, cosine of 0 is 1. Uh, sine of 0 is 0. I squared to get 1. Oh, hmm, that's not 0. That's 1. This is going to approach 1 in the top. Um, the bottom's going to approach 0. Hey, that's not a 0 over 0 form. We cannot L'Hopital this. This is a no-lope problem. No L'Hopital. All right, look, look, the technical way to say that is L'Hopital's rule does not apply. So if you just say no L'Hopital um, and sound a little bit like Adam Sandler, it's not going to fly. All right, so, but it's late. What can, I, what can I say? So what are we going to do with this limit? Well, let's figure out what it is. Look, if the denominator is going to 0 and the top is going to 1, that means this limit is either infinity or negative infinity, or if, or if it's the different directions are 
are opposite signs, it might be um, undefined. So let's let's look at what's going on. So when a, a, the denominator of a fraction is approaching zero, but the top is bounded, that means that this fraction, like you think I have a top that's getting closer and closer to one, and the bottom that's getting closer and closer to zero. So I'm getting a smaller and smaller denominator. So I have like one over one, let's do this with one over one, one over 0.1, 1 over 0 0.01, 1 over 0 0.001. This is 1, 10, 100, 1,000. So as the denominator gets smaller and smaller, the fraction as a whole is getting bigger and bigger. All right, but you've got to think about the sign. If I think about sine of x, as sine of x approaches 0, as from the left, it's approaching 0, but it's negative. And approaching from the right is sine of x is approaching zero, but it's going to be positive. So um, limit as x approaches zero from the right of cosine x minus sine squared x over sine x is positive infinity, because the numerator is approaching one, and the denominator is approaching zero, but positive. And the limit as x approaches zero from the left of cosine x minus sine squared x over sine x for the same reason as negative infinity, since the two limits are as unequal as they could possibly be, the limit as x approaches zero of cosine x minus sine squared x over sine x does not exist. Yeah. Okay, now one last one I want to look at is uh, number 21, which is actually on page 246 as well. Yeah, so um, that one says, uh, limit as x approaches infinity, limit as x approaches infinity, of um, 7x squared plus 4x, 7x squared plus 4x, over um, 9 minus 3x squared. Okay, so a couple of comments. First of all, it's an infinity over infinity form because you can factor the negative out. Top's going to infinity, bottom's going to infinity. If you factor the negative out of the denominator, factor the whole thing out. Okay? Second comment, you could apply L'Hopital's rule to this, but why would you? This is a horizontal asymptote of a rational function. Um, the limit is negative seven-thirds just by coefficients of the leading uh, terms. Right? So you don't need L'Hopital's rule for that. So that's why I've been a little selective in terms of what I'm going to assign to you from this page. Uh, I don't want you to do problems like this where you don't need L'Hopital's rule, but do watch out for ones where you cannot apply L'Hopital's rule. So your homework on this is going to be Rogowski, page 246, which I'm attaching here. Number, oh, I wrote this down somewhere else. There we go. Number seven, nine, 13, 15. Uh, I could say 25 through 31 odd, but I just kept with writing them out. 29, 31. There you go. That's what it is. That's your homework assignment. And this next, we're going to clean off another. See, this is a small topic. We're going to clean off another small topic, which is inverse functions next. <laughs>